Hello, friends. Welcome back to English Classes Online. My name is Benjamin. Today's video is on the use of tenses in English, mastering the correct use of the 12 tenses in English. Of course, in English. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Make sure you click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video is uploaded on the channel, you will be notified instantly. I have a free PDF file that teaches uh, the basic units of English grammar. It is there in the description box. You will find a link. You know, if you click on the link, then you'll be able to download the PDF file free of charge. You will also find my ebook titled Good Success in English. It is an all encompassing ebook. It is a complete study package for effective English learning. If you are learning English as a foreign language or as a second language or even as a pure academic course of study, then of course you need this book because it will be very useful to you. Now, Good Success in English is an all-encompassing book. It discusses, explains adequately all the very important areas of language study from the writing skills to the uh, comprehension to summary writing to uh, grammatic, grammatical structures, the units of grammar, and all other grammatical rules, including spelling rules, punctuation marks, and oral English, you know, oral English all aspects of phonetics and phonology, especially, you know, vowels and consonants, vowel sounds and consonant sounds, and then different types of stress, word or syllable stress, emphatic stress, and so on and so forth. In addition to all this, you will find past English questions and answers that will help you to prepare for your English exams. So all this and much more you will find in Good Success in English. And if you are interested in the copy, just click on the link in the description box. It will take you to the book uh, page where you can grab your own copy. So having said this, let's dive into today's lesson right away. Now let's start with the lesson objectives. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the meaning of tense. That's the first thing we are going to see. Number two, you should be able to mention the various tenses in English. And number three, you should be able to use the correct tenses of verbs in English sentences. So we are going to cover these areas. Now let's start with explaining what tense is all about. What exactly is tense? Tense is the form of the verb that indicates the time or duration of an action or state of being. All right, state of being. I hope that is clear to you. Then mastering the correct use of tenses is of central importance to the correct use of English sentences in speaking and in writing. And that absolutely is true. You know, when you understand the correct use of tenses, then it enables you to speak and write correctly. Okay, so we have looked at the meaning of tense. Let's now look at tenses at a glance. Let's mention the tenses. Let's look at them. What are these tenses? Now, we have the, these four uh, Let's look at the three time frames, present, past, and future. And then we have the four basic forms of the, I mean, 
types of sentences. We have simple, sorry, we have simple, we have continuous, we have perfect, we have perfect continuous. These are the four basic types of tenses. And then each of these uh, type, types of tenses has its, uh, has its um, expression in terms of time. So you can talk of the simple present or the simple past or the simple future. The simple present is right. The, the, past, the simple past is root and the simple future is we right. Now, the continuous, present continuous, I mean, just the continuous. The present continuous is, is writing. The past continuous was writing. The future continuous will be writing. What about the perfect tense? Present perfect has been, I mean, has written. Past perfect had written. Future perfect will have written. Then the, perf the perfect continuous tense. The present perfect continuous has been writing. The past perfect continuous had been writing. And the future perfect continuous will have been writing. Okay? Will have been writing. So you've seen them clearly. Then let's now talk about the uses of these tenses and how we can use them in meaningful English sentences. Now, the first thing we look at is the simple present, and it has the following uses. A, to express universal truth, when you want to talk about something that is true all the time. So it is timeless, it's true all the time. So you use the simple present uh, tense to talk about it. For example, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. A cube of sugar dissolves in water, all right? Dissolves in water. So those are examples of how we can use the simple present tense, all right, to talk about universal truths. Then B, to give instantaneous reports. When something is happening, such as when a football match is going on, this is typical of sports commentary. And then the commentator uses the simple present tense to report the actions uh, in, the, in the field of play. For example, Okocha passes the ball to Kano, who kicks it into the net. It is a goal. You see, you look at all the various tenses we used here. Passes is the, is the verb. And the tense is, is simple present, passes. Then kicks is another verb. The tense is the simple present. Is is also a verb. And the tense is the simple present. So you see that in sports commentary, when you need to report instantaneous actions or give instantaneous reports of the going on in the field of play, you need to use uh, the simple present tenses of verbs, okay? Then the second example, now, okay, sorry. All right, so please, that's I, I, example I, I. Now I add the meat and let it cook for 10 minutes. This is, an example of instructional demonstration. You are teaching somebody how to cook a meal, and then you are demonstrating, you are showing the person, you use the simple present tense. Now I add the meat, or I cut the meat into pieces, I wash the meat, I put the meat in a clean plate, or I, 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 I put the meat uh, or, or I add the meat, you know, you're already cooking something. I add the meat and then I let it cook for 10 minutes, you know. So mm -hmm. something like that, instructional demonstration. Now, 
uh, if you are teaching somebody how to drive a car, press the throttle, uh, do this, you know, press the, the brake, you know, do this, do that. You use the simple present tense. Okay, so the third example, I, 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 is when you want to express wishes, you want to wish someone well. We wish you every success. All right, or we wish you good success, you know. So the word wish is simple present. Another example, I send you my deepest sympathy. Somebody has lost his or her loved one and you want to send a condolence visit. I send you, the word send is simple present. Another example is when you are writing a letter of application. I write to apply for the post of sales manager in your company. I write to apply. You see, I write, simple present. I write to apply for the post of sales manager in your company. That is, that means you can use the simple present tense when writing a formal letter. Then uh, example VI, I named this ship Oriental Act. So in ship launching, I, I need to add here that if you are naming a child, it's the same thing. I name this child Favor. I name this child Alima. All right. So that is exactly how you can use the simple present tense. Then you can also use the, pre the simple present tense to talk about habitual actions, things that happen uh, from time to time. For example, Ada walks to school every day. It's something she does every day. It's a habitual action. Jude always asks silly questions. It's something he does habitually. Julia, Julian talks too much. That's a habit. So you use the simple present to talk about habits and habitual actions. Then the fourth one, is to talk about future events. You can use the simple present to talk about future events. For example, the train leaves at seven o'clock tomorrow. It, tomorrow hasn't come, but you can use the simple tense. You can say the president leaves, the president leaves for London tonight. He has not left, but you are using the simple present tense to talk about that future event. So, the second example is the meeting starts at 4 p.m. tomorrow. You see, so you can use the simple present tense to talk about future events. Now let's talk, let's look at present continuance. We are through with the simple present tense. Another uh, type of tense is the present continuance. And so you can use it to talk about. Uh, I mean, to report temporary happenings, things that, you know, uh, you know, happening, you know, just now, temporarily. Someone asks, where is John? He's working in the garden. What are you doing? I am writing a letter. What's happening? The students are demonstrating. All right. So then the second use of the present continuous is to talk about processes, things that uh, undergo some processes. They are repairing the road. The weather is changing. He's suffering from influenza. Something that is passing through uh, a process, all right? Yes. And may go on for some time. Then the, the, the next use of the Present continuous is to talk about habitual actions. All right. Uh, often when I pass, well, often when I pass, the old man is sitting there on the veranda watching the world go by. You know, that's exactly. Uh, so the old man is sitting there on the veranda. That's present continuous. But you are talking of what happens habitually. Often when I pass, you see that what you see the old man doing all the time. Uh, often when I pass, the old man is sitting there on the veranda watching the world go by. Then the second one, whenever I visit him, he is watching the movies. He is watching the movies. 
whenever I visit him. So it's something he does habitually. Then the third one, don't call on them at 7.30. They are usually having dinner. That's something they do habitually. Once it's 7.30, you can be sure they are having dinner. So don't even bother to call them at that time. You might distract them. So then the next one for idiomatic expressions. For example, day by day, we are getting nearer to death. We are running a race. You know, some philosophical expressions you use, uh, you know, the present continues to talk about them. All right? Then the, the next one is to talk about future happenings. Just as we could use the simple present tense to talk about likely future events, we can also use the present continuous. How do we do that? Dad is buying me a new coat for my graduation. You know, dad hasn't bought it, but I, I, I'm using this present continuous tense to project into the future and tell you my expectation. Dad is buying me a new coat for my graduation. You know, then the second example, I hear you are traveling to London. You are traveling to London. You haven't traveled, but I hear it, that is a plan in the offing is something you will likely do in the near future. Another example, we are moving to our new house this weekend. You know, we haven't moved, but it's, all, it's already a plan that has reached, uh, you know, a stage that is, there is likely no going back. It's almost certain that we will move to our new house this weekend. So. We are moving to a new house this weekend. You are now talking about future happenings, things that are expected to happen in the near future. Now, the next use of, uh, of the, the, the tenses is, I mean, the next tense we want to use, look at its uses is the present perfect. And one of the uses is, uh, to talk about past actions with present relevance. For example, we've lived in Lagos since 1984. That is, Lagos is where we have been living and that's where we are living even now. So you are talking about past actions that still have present relevance. Then the next example, you've not shaved your hair for ages. How do I know? I can see your hair is unkempt. So, there is something I can see that is telling me, uh, giving me a signal that there is an action you have not taken for some time. Is a past action or omitted action, then it has present relevance. We can see the evidence in the present. Okay, so the, the next use is to talk about unspecified time in the past. You don't know when it happened, but it's happened in the past. I have read that novel many times, all right? You can't lay your finger, place your fingers on when exactly, uh, on which occasions you read them, but these things happened in the past, unspecified time in the past. I have read that novel many times. Another example is there have been many bomb explosions in Nigeria. I'm not telling you specifically when it happened or on which specific dates, but these things happened in the past. Then the third use of the present perfect is to talk about a change that takes place over time. You know, it's a change that has taken place over time. Things have changed. When you, you often hear people say things like that, things have changed. You know, they are looking at the changes that have occurred, that have occurred over time, over time. All right. Then another example is you have grown since the last time I saw you. Probably you saw someone when he or she was just uh, a, very, a youth or a teenager. But after so many years, you now see the person and is a full grown up person. You say, look, you have grown since the last time I saw you. All right. So a change that has, been, that has taken place over time. Now, the next use of the present perfect is to talk about multiple actions 
at different times. For example, the committee has had four meetings this time. You know, four different events have taken place. You can use the present perfect to talk about them. Another example is we've, we've, we've had two tests so far this term. You know, multiple actions at different times. We can use the present perfect tense to talk about them. Then the next use of the present perfect tense is to talk about habitual actions. So you can see that all these three tenses, we can use them to talk about habitual action. Now, for example, the national news has been broadcast at nine o'clock for as long as I can remember. You know, you say it has always happened like this. Another example is Eze has always walked to school. You know, I've always seen him and each time I see him going to school, he has always walked to school. All right, so you can use that also to talk about habitual actions. Then the next use of the present perfect tense is to talk about resultative past. You know, for example, let me give an example so you can understand what this is all about. Rose has recovered from her illness. Rose has recovered from her illness. How do I know? Because as I can see her now, she looks well. She's now well again. All right. So it is something, you know, the recovery. I don't know exactly when the recovery took place, but I can see the result right now. So I can talk about it. So that is a resultative past. We, we use that to refer to something that happened in the past, but we are motivated by the result we see in the present to talk about it. Another example is someone has stolen my book. Why am I talking about it? My book is now missing. I can't see it. I don't know when exactly it was stolen, but the evidence is that it is missing right now. So the result is what is, what is prompting me to make this report. Someone has stolen my book. The evidence is that my book is now missing. I can't see it anywhere, all right? Now, we can also use the present perfect tense to talk about accomplishments or achievements, something that someone has achieved. For example, doctors have cured many deadly diseases. You know, these are accomplishments. Governor Fashola has transformed Lagos, you know, that's, is uh, accomplishment, okay? So you can use, you know, the, the present perfect tense in these various ways. And the more you learn about, you know, the uses of the various tenses of the verbs in English, the more you can use what we call sentence variety. You can use various types of sentences, and this will give you the ability to express your ideas with greater clarity, all right? Okay, so let's now talk about the last one, and that is the present perfect continuous. Now, you can use it to talk about duration from the past until now, something that started in the past and has been going on until now. And it's probably going on unless something else has intervened right now. Now let's look at examples. He has been teaching at UNM for three years. All right. This shows that he's probably still teaching there. Up till this moment, he, you know, this action has been going on. It started in the past and then it has been going on until now. He has been teaching at UNM for three years. Another example is Mr. and Mrs. Williams have been living in that house since they are married. Since they got married, they have been in that house, all right? Now, all these various examples, I love giving them all the time because they just give you a clear picture of how you can use the present perfect continuous tense. Now, the third example is we have been working here 
for over three hours. It's something we started three hours ago or over three hours ago where the thing has been going on and it's still going on right now. There's nothing to show we have stopped. We have been what we have been waiting. Sorry, we have been waiting here for over three hours. I mean, when you are losing your patience, you can begin to talk like that. We have been waiting here for over three hours. All right. So now the second use of the present continuous tense is to talk about temporary situation continuing until now. Is is uh, is like the first one we talked about. But look, let's look at specific examples. They've been repairing the roads. See, they've been repairing the roads. It means they are still at work. Now, this is different from when you say they repaired the roads. It means the job is finished. They repaired the road or they have repaired the road. When you use any of those ones, you are seeing, saying that the action uh, has been done and dusted. It is an action that was completed in the past. But this one, they've, they have been repairing the road means they are still at work. Another example is it has been raining. It hasn't stopped. It has been raining All, up until this moment. It is still raining, but it started raining in the past and has been going on, all right? Then the third example is I've been feeding the chickens. It means I'm still doing so. I've been feeding the chickens. What have you been doing since morning? I've been feeding the chickens, all right? I want, that is when the, the job requires a lot of time. You said, what well, I've been doing it and I'm still doing it. All right. Now, another use of the present perfect continuous tense is to talk about uh, a recently stopped activity, something that started in the past, but it stopped recently. All right. And the, all, the activity, although the activity has stopped, yet the effects are still uh, uh, clear. We can see the effects. You know, it, it resembles what, what we talked about when we, when we uh, discussed the re resultative past. It's something similar to that. Now, let's talk about it. For example, it has been raining. When you say it has been raining, well, it's possible that the rain has stopped. And, you know, when you look at the ground, that it is wet. The rain has just stopped. It has been raining. The evidence is that, you know, the ground is wet. Although the, the action has stopped, yet the result, the evidence that it, it has been happening is there, all right? Then the, third, the next example is, she has been crying again. She may have stopped crying, but you look at her eyes, that her eyes are red. You can look at somebody and say, ah, maybe the person uh, lost his or her loved one. And you look at the eyes, you visit the person again. Uh, last time you went, the person was crying inconsolably. And you go back and you go back there, and the person is still crying. It may not be really shouting and weeping at that time, but you look at the eyes that the eyes are red, I say, look, your eyes, I can see it in your eyes. Your eyes are red and swollen. You have been crying again. I have told you to stop crying. All right, so that is the kind of situation where you can use this, uh, uh, make use of the present perfect continuous tense in this manner. You have been crying again, all right? Then another example is you've been fighting again. All right, that's a, 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 a boy, probably a, a stubborn boy, you know, a troublesome boy who loves fighting. And each time he comes back from school, you find you, you get a report that he fought in the school. Now, this time around, you see him with a black eye. You know, someone must have given him. Uh, a punch in the eye 
and he has a black eye. So you say you've been fighting again. Or you say, ah, what happened to your eye? Have you been fighting again? Yes, it is obvious you have been fighting again. Look at, look at what happened to your eye. All right? Okay, so then the, the next use of the present perfect continuous tense is to talk about habitual actions. So we have, we have seen that virtually, I mean, all the four tenses we have discussed so far, you know, uh, can be used to talk about habitual action. For example, he's been scoring plenty of goals this season. That's something that has been happening regularly. Another example, the Super Eagles have been losing their games lately. That is That has become their habitual, you know, the habitual thing with them in this recent uh, time. The team has been losing their games lately. Then another example is Junior has been doing well in his, in his classwork this term. You know, since the term started, he has been doing well. We are not talking about one specific incident or one specific uh, test in which he did well, but it's something that has been happening habitually this time. You know, doing well has, you know, become part of his, uh, of his performance. So this is how it has been. We have been able to discuss four of the, of the tenses, all right? We've been able to discuss the present tenses, you know, the simple present, the, the, the present continuous, the present perfect, and the present perfect continuous. Of course, we will find time to talk about the past, the simple past, the past continuous, the past perfect, and the past perfect continuous. Then we will also find time to talk about the simple future the future continuous, the future perfect, and the future perfect continuous. These are the various, you know, various types uh, of various tenses of the verb. We have 12 of them. We have discussed four of them in this particular video, but we have I've shown you the 12 of them, and I've also given you specific examples in these tenses at a glance. But Detailed explanation has been given uh, of four of them. I hope you enjoyed today's class. Uh, if you did, like the video and share it with your friends. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, this is the appropriate time for you to hit the subscribe button. Make sure you click on the bell icon as well, so that whenever a new video goes live on this channel, you will be notified instantly. Don't forget that I've, I've, uh, I've already inserted the link that will help you to download a free PDF file that teaches, gives you some explanation on the basic uh, units of English grammar. Don't forget also that my ebook is live and you can obtain it. It is titled Good Success in English and it explains virtually all the major areas of proficiency in the use of English, all right? It treats the various uh, topics, important topics in English in the various chapters. It's a very, it's, it's an all-encompassing ebook. If you are uh, learning English, either as a foreign language or as a second language, or even as a, a, an academic course of study, you need to get this ebook. So at the description box, you will find a link that if you click on it, it will take you to the book page where you can grab your own copy of the ebook. So I want Many to say thank you for to all watching you. today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel subscribe now as a way of giving us support for notification about new videos click 
on the bell icon you will find the bell icon click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video like and share the video with your friends and relatives this is very important if you have any comments leave your comments below any questions any suggestions we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them see you in the next video i look forward to always see you in the new video thank you and